Good morning, everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from Matthew chapter 6, verses 26 and 27. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you thanks for another day of life. And dear Lord, sometimes we don't appreciate the fact that you have us here for a reason. And though we go through our motions, though we go through our the, the course of this life, dear Lord, sometimes we have our ups, sometimes we have our downs. But we just pray that we are thankful in every single situation we can take that example of job in that first instance when everything was taken on taken away from him and he was in utter disbelief and grief and the first thing that uttered out of his mouth was the lord giveth and the lord taketh away blessed be the name of the lord so we want to give you thanks, we want to give you praise in every situation and every moment of our life, knowing that you are there and you are doing this according to your will, so that we can be better conformed to your image, being holy vessels of your Holy Spirit. And we know that, as you said, you chasteneth the Son that you love. So through all things, I pray that our faith be not moved. I pray that we hold fast to the fact that you are our God and you are the God of all gods, the Lord of all lords, the King of all kings, the creator of all things. And dear Lord, I just want to pray that you allow us to love one another as you have loved us. This is our prayer because we know that this is well pleasing unto you if we show your love to one another and pr i pray that our bowels of compassion are not dried up but they are forever overflowing as your mercies are ever overflowing unto us i thank you for all things help all of us who are going through our tests and trials of this life that we are never overcome by them but we overcome all things through the victory that we have in you lord jesus christ and that our children as always are grown up with the knowledge and the example of you so that when they are of age they shall never neglect nor reject you lead us in spirit and in truth in your word this morning to the glory of god our heavenly father in the name of jesus christ we pray amen all right matthew 6 verses 26 and 27 says behold the fowls of the air for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And that was a pretty much a rhetorical question, because we know without doubt that we cannot add, we cannot, like, do anything out of our anxiousness or anything we cannot be um we can't add any we can't even do this thing by adding a measure to our stature right so jesus was there just showing us how much we ought to be um humble right this is showing you actually true humility and humility in the sense that we are not in control of anything right god is in control of everything and we have to rely on him and even just saying this i'm saying it knowing it but i know at points it is hard and sometimes we might stray away and try to lean on our own understanding our, our own abilities our own powers and maybe deviate to our own will right i'm i'm i'm, I'm not ever speaking hypocritical i know that this is something that we struggle with but this is why we, we rely on the word each and every day because this is just a reminder, right? And the more we keep these words, believe it or not, the more we keep these words in our hearts and in our minds, the more we are able to counteract the thoughts of anxiousness, the, um, the times when we want to, we're thinking too much, we're kind of getting anxious, we're kind of um, thinking, how am I going to do this? How am I? I notice that 
emphasizing on the I. How am I going to do this? How am I going to um, get through this? How am I going to attain this? How am I going to X and Y and Z, right? Notice the I there. We, 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 need to, we need to take that out of our vocabulary, right? Because at the end of the day, as I said, and if you read this chapter, we see that it is the Lord that is in control of everything. So instead of depending on ourselves and thinking of how I going to do X, Y, or Z, is better we say, Lord Jesus Christ, help me to do X, Y, and Z. Because at the end of the day, if he is for it, right, if it's according to his will, there's nothing that can go against it. And um, I like how we just use the examples of the animals, right? And even in the book of Proverbs, I can't remember what chapter, I think it was where Agor, was it Agor talking? It might be chapter 30. Either chapter 30 or 29, it might be 30. It starts off and said the word of Agor or something like that. And he gave some good examples of like, observe the ants, right? The ants and how they just operate. They have no king over, even the locusts also, they have no king over them. And yet they just uniformly work together and do what they need to do, right? And we know that all of these animals, they don't, they, I don't think these animals get anxious. And if they get anxious, there must be some human intervention there, right? Must be some pet that <laughs> the humans put anxiety on the dog or the, on the cat or something. But most animals, they, they get up in the morning, they don't prepare the meal. Some animals obviously store up food for the winter and all of that stuff, but still. They don't worry about, oh, I'm going to have no money for this today. I'm going to have, um, I don't have a, a big enough place to store my food or I don't have the work for tomorrow to provide. Like, they don't do that, do they? They literally wake up, you know, hear the bird, them chirp, 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 and they fly around, find one bug, eat it, good. Right? So, it is... It puts us to shame as human beings because we're supposed to be the dominant um, crea uh, creation on the earth. Isn't it? The, the Lord gave Adam dominion over all of these things. Yet, they put us, the animals put us to shame in their, their trust in the Lord, right? Because as I said, we, sometimes we can get taken away with the cares of this life in that we forget that we are not really in control. We have a false sense of control because obviously some of us have jobs some of us are able to provide um financially or whatever for families and friends and all of that stuff and it might give us a false sense of that we are in control but we are not we, we see this time and time again we're put to shame because even with the economy and everything we we'll see where we get rises rises and then it plateaus and then there's a crash and then people lose their job people lose their homes people lose so, at the end of the day, as I said, it's just a false sense of safety, right? But what we ought to be doing, as the scripture says, if you read along in chapter 6, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto us, right? Which is showing us that, at the end of the day, we ought to be fully committed to doing the will of God. And one example that came to mind this morning was the prophet um, Elijah. We know that the story of Elijah, he just picked up, he just he just said there was a man, um, a, a, a Tishbite, a Tishbite, I can't remember where it starts off, but it just starts off with him already. They didn't show us like his birth and all of that stuff. Right, but in that scripture, just the, the, the account of Elijah, I just saw where he was completely dependent on the Lord. I didn't see where he had no ma massive dwelling place or... He had, um, I don't even think he mentioned that he had a wife, children, um, or like land and riches. It, nothing, I, I don't recall any of that being mentioned of him. I just see him just going X and Y and Z, um, going from here to there, place to place and just, yeah, sorry about that, the phone cut off. So, yeah, so, yeah, that's a good example there to use is the, the, the um, account of Elijah, but, um, I said, we ought to have faith in God that he's able to give us and bring us through all things. And um, yeah, as I said, it's hard, but as we have his spirit and his word, 
which abide in us and teaches us all things, we, this is what's going to help us to conquer these these days of sojourning in this life, right? So I'll leave it at that this morning, everyone. Any questions, anything that you want to send in, you can send in to the word at e3h1.org. And as much as the Lord has led me, taught me and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to his word, according to his principles, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. So have a blessed day, everyone, and God's willing, we'll catch up again tomorrow.